Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Hamda. again? I'm Hamda. Okay. Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Hamda. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a letter from Jenna. Keith and Hamda. Well, first Hamda, she says. Yes, first is the... Oh, shit. Worst rhymes with first. So let's just read the letter. Thank you for being so open about your life, your relationship, and the abuse you endured. I wish someone would ske- speak that way. It's a relief and magical to listen to. I wish everyone would. Let me start all over. <laughs> huh? Yes. Why isn't this going? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Hemda. They're Keith and Hemda. First, Hemda, thank you for being so open about your life, your relationship, and the abuse you endured. I wish everyone would speak this way. It's a relief and magical to listen to. I wish everybody would enjoy me this way. I get a lot of like, oh, so you're just going to say shit. I'm like, yeah, I guess I am. Keith, thank you for yelling questions at Hemda <laughs> and asking the invasive questions we wanted to know about. So I believe this is in regards to my name is Keith, right? Yeah. Keith and the Girl is the greatest, funniest, and most interesting show ever, and becoming a VIP is the best decision of my life. We love all our VIPs. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jenna. Well, we have a premium program, of course. You go to keithandthegirl.com slash VIP. It's every show we've ever done over 14 years and our spinoff shows. In this case, my name is Keith, Henda's interview show, What's My Name, a whole whole bunch of stuff. The last week on Keith and the Girl wrap-up. Which is the recap of the week before. And we talk about the guests that come on the show and the behind the scenes that happen. And uh, the guest now has her eyes wide open about holy shit. (laughs) Today's show features the co-host of Teen Mom Trash Talk, the podcast. And 90 Day Fiance Trash Talk, the podcast. Tracy Carnazzo. Thanks for having me. Hello, Tracy. Uh, I really don't like when you call me a co-host because I feel like I'm the host. Okay. Can we do that again? Yep. Thanks. Okay, great. <laughs> host of Teen Mom Trash Talk, <laughs> the podcast. Thank you. Host and only one that matters at 90 Day Fiance Trash Talk, the that's podcast. What, that's what I like to hear. Tracy Carnazzo. Much better. Thank you, Keith. Yesterday I was talking about the movie Rocket Man and mm-hmm. how I believe there should be a lawsuit because Rocket Man deliberately didn't tell people it was a musical. And that I found it offensive. And I first 10 minutes, uh, they start singing a song and I'm like, this is going to keep going, isn't it? And then the second song came up, and it was quite clear that right. this is going to happen forever. And mm-hmm. you can't get a, you can't get into the dirt of the great Elton John if everything's a song. Right. You, you just can't. You wanted more anal. I wanted something. <laughs> I get it. I wanted something. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and Hemda said, you know, a lot of people like musicals. I'm like, mm, okay. They do, and I think I think they like the familiarity of I already know this song, and now they're putting it into some sort of like jazzy visual, you know? Right. Also, the audience of Elton John, uh, they probably all like musicals. I'm just gonna throw that sure, out. Sure, of course. But the the they understand that more people don't like musicals, and that's why the trick was out there. Yeah, they're not gonna announce it because they didn't right. want you not to go. That's trying to they're trying to bamboozle me. And it works. I, yes, of course a lot of people like musicals. A lot of people like lima beans. But you don't say lima beans are oranges. You say they're lima beans. And then if you want lima beans, that's what you get. No, I get it because I hated chicken cacciatore growing up. Mm -hmm. And every time my mom made it, I'd be like, what is this for dinner? And she'd be like, pizza chicken. And then I would bite into it, (laughs) not pizza chicken. You know, that's how I ate liver growing up. Because if you you told me that I was eating liver, I would just be like, oh, I'm not eating this. But they said kaved, which is just liver in Hebrew. And and you're like, like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this brown food. And so I was eating liver. Saying disgusting things about liver, if anyone ever brought Did it up. Did you like it? I loved it. Do you like it today? <laughs> I could eat it, but I, I'll never order it because it's liver. Right. Why am I eating liver? It's good for you. Stop it. It is good for you. Okay, so have you ever heard eat what ails you? That's like a saying? No? Nothing. Okay, no one is. No. So eat what ails you means that um, if you are... Uh, so liver is really good for your iron because the liver has to do with the blood, right? So if you are having an iron problem or you're having a problem with your liver, you're supposed to eat that. Wait, you're a hypochondriac, right? Yeah. I don't know about No, this is a real thing. <laughs> um, if, if, if you're having a problem with your bones, you can drink bone broth for collagen. That's good for your bones. Calcium if, is good for your bones. What if you have like a, your nails are chipping? Your nails are chicken, but you can eat nails. (laughs) All right. (laughs) But the kind you drill. Well, I said, look, 
most people don't like musicals. In fact, when the Tonys are on, you don't even know it. But of course, you know when the Oscars I mean, are on. What do you mean we don't know when the Tony? Who are you? Not only did people not know about the Tonys, they happened to be on the night we recorded that show. That's how people don't know about the Tonys. So get out of town. I mean, here. I know about the Tonys. I'm sure you did. Who won? Beetlejuice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Best musical, <laughs> Hades Town. What's that? Thank you. Okay. Best play, The Fairy Man. What? Okay. Revival of a musical, Oklahoma. You know that. It's a state. <laughs> Oklahoma. Yes. Where the fam is there. <laughs> Best musical, ruining of a movie, Tootsie. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe they have Tootsie on. They really? do? Yeah. The, you remember Tootsie, right? No. Oh, okay. So it's a dude who dresses up as a woman in order to get a job. Okay. Which is a little ironic, but it's... it. it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's probably like kitschy. It was kitschy, but I'm wondering how they're tackling it now with all the stuff that we know about, you know, cross-dressing, right. trans people. They're probably just making, like, funny sillies. I wonder, because yeah. I, I imagine... I'll ask my mom. I'm sure she's seen it. My mother goes to plays all the time. Please report back. I will. I got you. Uh, best leading actor in a play. Now, these are normal plays without music. Brian Cranston, Network. He's awesome. Kyla saw that. She said she liked it, but then she said she liked Rocket Man. I saw her yawning five thousand times. Wow. She doesn't like saying anything negative. She doesn't like to hurt feelings. She Who's doesn't want to. Are you on the phone with the cast? Rocket Man. She's afraid she's going to hurt his feelings. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Did he... you tweet at him? Uh, lead actress in a play, Elaine May, The Waverly Gallery. So you know the whole list goes on. I really like Brian and Malcolm in the Middle. By the way. That was some of Is that a play? Part. No, that was a, a show that was on that he that he was on before. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> also, I have to make some corrections. On the show last week mm -hmm. with Maddie Smith, I yeah. was talking about Jeopardy and yeah. the you had uh the main guy, Ken Jennings. Yes. He was the big winner. And trying to take This was years ago, of course. And trying to take him over for first place mm -hmm. is the very recent James Hotzhauer. Right. Okay. And I got confused how much money you did. And you made. said the same amount twice. Right. It's not a big deal. Ken Jennings <laughs> made $2,520,000. Right. Okay. James made $2,464,000. And how many cents? Because you did say the cents, uh, didn't you? Uh, 27 Thank cents. Thank you. Okay. So the difference, I, I said something about, I was I thought I remembered, $500,000. Yep, that's exactly what you said. $56,484. His average that he was making on a show was 77000 The most he made was 131000 What I'm trying to say is, is if this James went one more show... He would have broken the record. He would have broken the record. And... I think he's all right. He did... He was only on 33 times compared to Ken. I said this in reverse. Ken was on 74 times. Uh, so he made a ton more money than Ken. So, yeah. So he did a lot... Per episode. Yeah, he did a lot better than Ken did, and he's not number one. And y you make this joke, like, I think he's going to be okay. That still has to eat at you. That's I, the thing. Like, you just I won two and a half million dollars, and you have something to be bummed about. You need to check your right. happiness level. But like, are we just making this up that he's bummed? I think we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I've, I saw him on that show, smiling at awkward times. This isn't a happy person. But he's a Jeopardy contestant. They always smile at awkward <laughs> times. They don't know when to smile. He's a little touched. That's all. Is. That playing Jeopardy is fun to people. That's not yeah. a regular smile. That's yeah. not a human being. They, That's like a computer. They, never, ever, they yeah. never look like they're having fun. I've been to uh, amusement parks. I see what it looks like when people have fun. Yeah, they the, don't look like they're enjoying themselves. These are people who play Trivial Pursuit when people take the time to come over to their house. Right. Why am I taking a test at your house? I get it. Do you ever watch Jeopardy and then uh, DVR it and then like your significant other comes home <laughs> and you watch it? And you know all the answers. <laughs> and they're not really watching. They're, they're like, in the other room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're just yelling it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they never know you're a genius because yeah. they're not really paying attention, right. but you still yell it. Have you done it? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were talking about the woman that beat James Houtzhauer, mm -hmm. uh, Emmy Bet Emma. Emma? Mm -hmm. Emma Betscher. Uh, uh, she's out already. I'm so bored right now. Yeah. <laughs> you not only, you don't want to watch it, you don't even want to hear about it. But then, she, but then she had twins uh, with an illegitimate uh, ex-boyfriend. You yeah. excited? Do I have you back? Um. <laughs> You're an animal. Get a little culture, okay? Was there a lot of abuse? <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of abuse. Okay. I'm back in. <laughs> I'll tell you who the big... Was she underage? 
She was underage okay. every, and everything wrong. <laughs> uh, something about her mother. In the middle of the episode, her mother came in and told her she was stupid, and then they continued the show. This is, yeah, yeah. yeah, I would have watched. A lot of drama on Jeopardy. <laughs> I really was rooting for this woman for some reason. I think because I'm like reverse a woman. or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because men are disgusting. Yeah, but also she was so calm. It was like eerie. Like she can stab someone and answer the question, and I feel like she'd have the same expression. But I was happy about that. Yeah, and and so. She was so quick and took down the the super champion that I thought she's going to skate forever on this. Yeah. She wasn't like a typical hysterical woman. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. She, she got to control her emotions. She probably could have been president even if she had her period. <laughs> you, guys, you guys, don't you wish I was on Jeopardy? Oh, my God. I mean, Can I don't know imagine? how many episodes she was last. <laughs> but let's say I was on Jeopardy and I was You'd winning. Like, oh, God damn it. I did press the button. Didn't I press the button? <laughs> I mean, I don't know the answer, but I pressed the button. Penda Come would, on. <laughs> Penda would still be celebrating. And it's like, no, we're on the second round, 14th question. You won the first question. Penda, oh. did you just draw a picture for the... <laughs> that's not an answer. That's a picture you drew. You get it, though. Right. And the uh, and what did you... Uh, well, you wagered all your money. And your answer was... Your question was, uh, who is Xerxes Scrumpty Dump High? Be home soon. <laughs> No, we were looking for Constantinople. Well, we're looking for different things, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Alex Trebek makes $10 million a year. He does a week of shows one day a week. So he works one day a week. What an asshole. He forces everybody to do all of those in one day. Yeah. He's like, all I have to do is read a book in a day. Yeah, so you could be a millionaire and leave that show angry. It's kind of like you guys, huh? <laughs> wow, 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 oh, wow, 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 wow. Oh, you don't like it when it happens to <laughs> <See> you? <laughs> It's three o'clock in the morning right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been recording for seven hours. Uh, Uncle Sam gets, of course, half that money. So that's the biggest winner. We we decided to have some fun. He gets rich. I don't. That's such a weird thing, right? It's I mean, strange. I know that you you didn't have that to begin with, but that's I funny. wish they would just be like, "You won a hundred dollars, but really, we're putting fifty, and you so you could just at the end of the day." win what you win right yeah. we already sent it to like you know at the end like, yeah we paid we your sent, taxes we sent fifteen hundred dollars to the tax <laughs> man but you get to go home with fifteen million dollars you know like just right. just break it down at the end and then and don't give me the money and then i have to hand See, it over this is how people get arrested because you give me a oh. million dollars and go like oh just give five hundred thousand to the irs i'm like they could wait right right well do you know that's not really what bothers me it's not when you win cash it's when you win an actual prize and you have to pay Oh, right. Didn't Christian win a car on uh, TV? Christian Finnegan, you know, your, mm -hmm. your best friend? Oh, yeah, the one that your I ex? love, my, my ex-boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> he won a car, and I think that you do have to pay taxes. Well, remember Oprah's You Get a Car, You Get a Car, yeah. You Get a Car, so she gave everybody in her audience a car, and it turns out a lot of people couldn't afford to pay the taxes on the car. Yeah, or to even have the car, because you got to insure it to even right. put it on. The, like, there's Thanks so much. Oprah. She's yeah. such a dick. It's so funny. We, we all really did turn on her. We're like, wow, she got everybody a car. Right away, everyone's like, that's sponsored. It's not like she bought everybody a car. She's right. a fucking millionaire who gives a shit. And then afterwards, we were like, I knew it. Nothing good can come of yeah. anything. Just give us the goddamn money. It's like when your employer takes you out to like a nice dinner and drops two to three hundred dollars mm -hmm. on it. And it's like, I could have made steak at home. Just give me the Who two are these employers that are taking? I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I hear about things. I've, do we have real jobs? Tracy, you're really calling out a lot here <laughs> <Jesus> today. <laughs> Christ. You know what? Let me tell you something about the Oprah car business. Oh what boy. kind of car did she even give? Because that wasn't the great. No one remembers what kind of car it was. That's true. It would be. She weird. should have probably been like, "I gave you a Chevy, and I gave you a Chevy, and I, you know, <laughs> like instead of." I'm just saying. You're right. They need to make good on that. <laughs> <laughs> when you redo an ad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, let me mention this. This ties in with money. Robinhood, an investing app that we use, mm -hmm. lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, cryptos. All commission free. That's the gimmick. Oh, wow. It's so insane. Actually, I knew nothing about stocks and I was so nervous to try it, but they give you a free stock, so I couldn't. I they couldn't. do? Yeah. What free. kind of, what'd you get? Well, I, I can't tell you. Oh, okay. Because I think that's something about insider trading or whatever. Stop making me make a make good on this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but what the best part of it is I didn't really have to know anything. They really walk you through. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> But now I check every morning and I'm like, I know what I'm looking at. 
Oh, I want to free stock. Ser- seriously. Right, I don't know how to. I wish I can tell you a few more right. details, but I would be arrested. So I don't think that's how it works. It, it so is. It so is. I don't think you know what well, insider trading is. the app and you'll see. All right, Martha Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody who she's friends with somebody that like real big on Wall Street. And mm-hmm. she brought this app up and he goes, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it is. No, oh, it's, man. it okay. really. I mean, I'm and it's so. called Robin Thicke. <laughs> Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Okay. <laughs> I was so, 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 so intimidated by this stuff. In fact, Keith and I wanted to invest in crypto. We called Xerxes and like, mm-hmm. how do you do it? And he sent me this long email on how to do it. And then we called him back going like, we're just going to give you $100 yeah. and you do it. That was before I knew about Robin oh, Hood. Wow. Now, I don't fucking need Xerxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fuck wow. you. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> While other Sorry, broker- Xerxes. <laughs> other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade. Robin oh, my Hood- God. Xerxes charged us 20 No, I'm kidding. Oh. Robin Hood doesn't <laughs> charge any commission fees. You can trade stocks and keep all your profits. Plus, there's no account minimum deposit needed to get started. You can start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robin Hood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy-to-understand charts and market data in place of trade and just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections. For example, let me look at 100 most popular. Done. That with, was that made it a lot easier. Yeah. With, with Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio. Discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. And they know people like me are on the stocks on on, on this app, so they like color code things. They mm-hmm. really like they must have taken someone like me and said What's your problem? And then right. fixed it. Robin Hood is giving listeners of Keith and the Girl a free stock. I'm going to do it. I'll give Seriously. you some examples. Stocks such as Apple. Don't say it. This is Don't how you get arrested. It. These are examples. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Apple. <laughs> Ford. <laughs> Sprint. I have a Ford. That's going to help you build your portfolio. Well, you, now you'll be even more. No, You get a Ford. You get a Ford. You see how that works? But now you, could really, you can have a piece of their company. Right. Like I'm an owner, guys. Okay. Here's how you do it. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. Go to katg1, the number one, okay. dot robinhood.com. Oh, okay. katg, the number one, dot robinhood.com. I'm going to say it one more time. katg1, dot robinhood.com. They're giving you a free stock. Yeah. And if you've never understood it, this is your way to understand it with a free stock. We're all going to learn together. Seriously, on this app separately yeah. in separate rooms because I don't want to know your process. It sounds dangerous. What if we're talking and then by accident it slips about what stock I got? Okay, so that'll be the only ad today, <laughs> folks. Okay? <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Right to jail. <laughs> Uh, Mackenzie Bezos, the ex-wife, of course, of uh, Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, Mm -hmm. has received from the divorce, he got caught cheating, $36 billion. (gasps) What'd you get, Hamza? (laughs) (laughs) I can't tell you if you're right. How many billions did you get? (laughs) $36 billion. $36 billion. That's not terrible. But you know what? Uncle Sam got most of it. Ah, poor her. Boom. (laughs) Uh, The 49-year-old novelist said in a letter shared online that she signed the Giving Pledge, a campaign to set the ultra-wealthy to donate more of their fortunes to charitable causes. And she says, I have a disproportionate amount of money to share. The ex is like, you bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Do ya? You got too much? I got too much that I fought for. Mm -hmm. Uh, The founders of the Giving Pledge are Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. Her ex-husband, the richest man in the world, didn't sign the pledge. She's like, I'll, I'll sign it. Mm. I got a lot of money. She sounds great. I like her. Yeah. My, apo- my approach to philanthropy will continue to be thoughtful. It will take time and effort and care because I got so much money. It's going to take too much time. Do you know people can't accept billions legally? <laughs> you have to give it slowly. <laughs> I pay a guy to keep on top of that. Is it Xerxes? <laughs> <laughs> but I won't wait, and I will keep it. I will keep at it until the safe is empty. Wow. What a great person. First of all, there are things that people do in relationships mm. that is so fucking criminal, but not against the law. Like gaslighting. How do we build a law against gaslighting other than I'm going to get you in the divorce? You know what I mean? I mean, like, I think that's what it is. Though. I think so, too. And I, I you better hope someone real rich is gaslighting you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing there's like no you don't go to jail for fucking with your wife or husband like you don't you can lie for emotional cheat. abuse you mean 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, but, but it really is like similar to physical, except you don't get to explain yourself with, um, like proof. Sure. You know what I mean? You're just like, he was mean to me. Right. But it's like, you know what? I can put a dollar amount on that. Just like you can put a, a life sentence on someone who touched your kid, you sure. know? So this is usually I'm like, uh, this is what's bad about, um, marriage and divorce. Like you really, the laws are different now. It's not like women completely rely on men. Like you do have to have like dual income sometimes. So I don't know why some people are getting half when they're not working for it, but you fucked up. Right. I think that uh, there is definitely a way that you can tell if you're all fucked up from a relationship. Maybe uh, there could be some kind of like monitoring you on your first date after the divorce. Interesting. And they could be like, oh, wow, she's real <laughs> fucked up. Right. <laughs> Holy shit. Like if a boy. She just asked him if he was lying at <laughs> dinner on the first date. She keeps saying, why haven't you texted me back? What about Friday? What about Saturday? What was your problem? And they just met. You know what? She was she was all fucked. Yeah. It's a clue. She was abused. <laughs> you're, you're at dinner on her first date, and it's like, oh, I ordered French fries instead of mashed potatoes. But sorry to interrupt. Did you? <laughs> Did you though? What, what does that mean? Right. Are you trying to control me? It's something. These uh, millionaires, they, and how bored they get. Didn't we like? I, I mean, not that we were. I was talking about in my men's groups, but <laughs> Justin Bieber. It seemed like he got married. We were okay with him. We kind of forgive him pissing and egging on people's houses. And now he's bored again. He can't help himself. And well, he's this, this out of nowhere, he's challenging Tom Cruise to a fight. <laughs> yeah, wasn't he like That's an great. adult now? That's, That's just great. the vibe I got. I don't read People Magazine or anything, but I just got this vibe. Like somehow we're okay making fun of this child spitting at a picture of the president. I think um, he found Jesus, and that's when people are like, well, he found Jesus. We can't make fun of it. We right. have to like. Oh, I think that's exactly when you start making fun. Yeah. It's like, oh, he found Jesus. <laughs> Jeez. Did he find Jesus in the toilet? Because this time he's peeing there? Yeah, he put out a tweet saying he's, let's see. Uh, I want to challenge. No, it came out of nowhere. 25 years old. I want to <laughs> challenge Tom Cruise to a fight in the octagon. Ooh. What's the octagon? I don't know. Oh, okay. That's sounds, it sounds <laughs> eight-sided, though. <laughs> Is that's, that where the. That's where they fight. Uh, what do you mean that's where they fight? That's where MMA fighters fight. Oh, <laughs> it's the big cage. Uh, Tom, if you don't take this fight, you're scared and you will never live it down. <laughs> okay. Well, he has Zenu, so what else? Who is willing to put on this fight? At Dana White? Dana White is the UFC president. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, trusty. Uh, Dana White said, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm free always. <laughs> I will cancel everything. I'm going to threaten every single celebrity. Let's see if we can. If get you don't give me $2 million, you're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get uh, John Travolta on a double bill. Uh, Bieber's tweet quickly went viral, prompting UFC champion Conor McGregor to chime in, saying, if Tom Cruise is man enough to accept this challenge, McGregor Sports and Entertainment will host the bout. Oh, good. That was the problem. I love, I love that they're using the terminology, like, if he's man enough. If I was Tom Cruise, I'd be like, uh, I can't even hear I'm a, you. I'm very small. Yeah, he's, but, he's a tiny little baby man. Uh, you're Tom Cruise. You got to be like, uh, excuse me, assistant. Look up why Justin Bieber wants <laughs> to fight me. I, I don't see anything, boss. You're fired. Next, this is, he's got to fire like 15 people until he realizes, oh, Justin Bieber's insane. All right, y'all can come back. Sorry. I'd be like, uh, no, thank you. If I was Tom Cruise, I'd be like, do you, do we just have that level of money? We're just going to come right. in with a bunch of bills and try to paper cut each other? What's right. happening? Imagine he just blocked him on Twitter. That's, and that's it. That's the best thing to do. Yeah. Like, you must be manic right now. He's trolling. Does Cruz have the sprouts to fight? He's you know a little what? baby. Tom Cruise was able to keep his mouth shut during this horrendous Scientology publicity. Mm. Do you really think he won't be able to help himself? Yeah. I know someone who uh, did sex with Tom Cruise. Yeah? Yeah. Who's that? I do. Uh, it was in the post, I think it was. It was all, you remember when they first split and he was having an affair? Him and who? Uh, it was a girl that worked. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Who split? Him and Katie. Okay, Kate, Kate Holmes. Kate now we're calling her? Kate, uh, well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Him and uh, Katie split, and he was uh, having a, a, a sexy time with one of the hostesses at a Lower East Side hotspot restaurant. Okay. Yeah. The hostess? Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's a little tiny man. Was that? I'm not getting this. Like, I don't think you understand, like, how, like, yeah, he's like a little short guy. Yeah, I think he's, he usually stands on his money. Yeah. He uses it as platform. He has shoes. lifts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, McGregor says, does Cruz have the sprouts to fight like he does in the movies? He is a sprout. Like he does in the movies. You know what? If it can be like the movies, can he bring a gun? How about a motorcycle? <laughs> How about a stuntman? <laughs> uh, stay tuned to find out, says All McGregor. Right. No. <laughs> uh, then he called out. Then this is uh, Conor McGregor, who's, who's always in the news. For, right. You know, he's, he's uh, punching a stranger in the face. or. Oh, yeah? He seems even, fine. Even I know his name, but yeah. he's hot-headed. He's that one. Very. Uh-huh. Uh, he, he decided to call out Mark Wahlberg. And say, I challenge Mark Wahlberg. Like, Mark Wahlberg's like, what is that? I just woke He's up. He's like, I'm just doing burgers right now, really. I challenge Mark Wait, who, who's challenging this time? Uh, Connor. Connor McGregor is jumping in and saying, you know what? Since we're already doing a Hollywood fight. So now do you think that Mark Wahlberg's going to challenge someone? Mark Wahlberg <laughs> might not be able to control himself, to be honest. It's I a new ice that. challenge. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I challenged Mark Wahlberg on the very same card. Back when Mark Wahlberg was Marky Mark, I'd slap the ears off him and took my UFC shares back. That's honest. You're such a pussy. This is really stupid. You're an MMA fighter challenging Mark Wahlberg. I challenge Alec Baldwin to a fight right now. <laughs> okay. And it's going to be uh, semi-naked. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and lots of oil. Yeah. I challenge the Bachelorette. Mm. <laughs> so this is, uh... Justin Bieber, again, 25, like to fight. Tom Cruise, 56. <laughs> and then hopefully if Conor McGregor has his way, there's a double card. There's a, <laughs> a double bill. A double bill. Mm. Honestly, I who, who do you think would win? Because I think um, uh, Tom Cruise would, would beat the shit out of Bieber. Yeah. It yeah. depends on how crazy you are. A lot of it's crazy. A yeah, lot but of fighting first is of all, craziness. Tom Cruise has a high level of crazy. Did you see him jump on Oprah's couch? Now, granted, that was that was over before. a decade ago. That was a long time ago. I get he's, it. He's a little bit older now. How old is his cruisy? 56. 56. But I feel like Bieber might be able to Justin take him. Bieber is yeah. like this scrawny little Doesn't nothing. Doesn't matter. And he's crazy, not in the way that like would fight well. He's crazy in the way that would like cry in a fetal no. position in the, in the corner. <laughs> Disagree. Justin really? Bieber's a scratcher. You know it and I know it. Okay. <laughs> Now, what that means, you take it from there. Oh, my God. Huh. So you think, who do you think? So you think I think Bieber Justin could Bieber win because Bieber he... wants it bad enough. Bieber's like, I'm not going to stop until I taste no, blood. No, he's coked up. He's not going to want exactly. it. Exactly. Like... Coke... Okay, yeah, coked yeah. up is when you win the fight. That's true. <laughs> I don't even do cocaine, but when I do a, like when I'm in a fight, I do. You never, never did mind. cocaine. No, I never did cocaine. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're a fighter. Yeah. I like a good fight. Could you beat a Justin uh, Bieber. It depends on what we're fighting about. Am I super passionate about it? He um, slept with your boyfriend. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. She's like, no. finally, an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tracy, you can follow online. The Twitter account is Trixie Tuzini. I'm reading it right now. She wrote, "This is in June, this very month." Yeah. Some people will overlook you, no matter how much you help them. It's true. That's so sad. What happened? Uh, I just feel like in uh, in this industry, in life. That a lot of people don't see, like, you know, people ask you for help, and mm. you give them help, you give them help, you give them help, and then when you need something, what? Mm. I can't hear you. Because you understand you're just helping somebody. You're not taking something away from yourself, but these people think they are. Somehow they're losing so. out by helping the other person. Yeah, the, everyone, not everyone, and I don't want to say everyone, but sure. a lot of people uh, are only out for themselves. And I want to say in comedy, but it's in life. It is in life. Mm-hmm. It's in life. But a lot you, of people are out for themselves. You are on a very amazing level of keeping in touch. and I like, try to. And knowing people's stuff. When you see them, you're like, how's your aunt so-and-so? And it's like, who knew their aunt so-and-so? Right. So that's I like, like to a- do like a deep dive of stalking <laughs> <laughs> before no. I talk to any of my friends. <laughs> now, now, when you tweet this, yeah. do you... It, it feels good that people go like, I hear you. It people feels good. Shit. I want you to think it's about you. That's the okay. whole thing. Oh, okay. Because then it's like, oh, what did I not? You it had was s- about you, Keith. It w- was about you. How'd you feel? You did have somebody in mind, though, right? I had a few people in mind, to be okay. honest with you. But what? But one would it be one person that triggered you that day? It was like two or three that day, and that's why I was like, you know what? I'm okay. going to throw out a sub. See, Keith doesn't understand this because he's not in touch with two or three people in a day. Right. That's he's like just a in week. touch. He's just sending voice notes to yeah. me. <laughs> I'm like, were you at the park? Where, you know? <laughs> How are, how's everybody letting you down? <laughs> Why do you know them? <laughs> How do you like Keith's voice notes? Um, okay, I got to tell you, we had a conversation the other night, and I LOL'd like pretty hard. Mm. He was a very silly, silly, silly boy. Um, he was uh, he was trying to fuck with me, but you know I'm mm. smarter than you are. Um, and he was saying <laughs> how I tell him something in real life, mm. and then when he asked me about it on the podcast, yeah. I space out and pretend I don't know what he's talking yes, about. Yes, that's true. And that was very funny. But he's 
<laughs> Hilarious. But he does send 400 <laughs> voice notes at the yes. same time. Yes. Right. So I feel like one long voice note or a lot of text is fine. That's what you'd want, a 10-minute voice note? Then you can make a I sandwich? I guess, but also, you know, I know that Andrew... <laughs> I know that Andrea, <laughs> it's like a little baby podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Andrea was I saying like, for those. like sometimes I'm not in a place where I could just listen to your voice notes. Okay, weird liar. You obviously were in a place. All right, I'm always because, in the bathtub. Let's because you real. said because you said hi to me and then we're talking. You right, know, so, so what do you mean? Sometimes you're in a place. When have I ever written you that you're in a place? No, I've you never know what? In a place. No, I've written you and then you start sending voice notes back and I'm like, I guess we're talking later then because you, I right. can't because Xerxes is right there all, and I'm listening to right, him. It's like not we you. can't. We're not going to all have a convo. Yeah. Why don't you all go to therapy? Because I don't know what the I fuck go to this therapy. Is. I've been going to therapy. <laughs> well, leave her or double your dose. <laughs> Because this is a text is I throwing. I actually am on go, a new how, medication. How do I respond? No, I like. I don't the, mind it. I don't mind it. Of you were course, you don't mind it. You were making being, me. You were making me giggle. You're being night. goofy. You had a good time no, and look at you trying to I shit on it. it. You would cry if I didn't leave you voice messages, and you know it. Yes, that's right. You can act tough. Mm -hmm. You can act tough. <laughs> He's right. He knows me too well. Thank you. <laughs> I would cry. You would what? If you I would cry. I would cry. I would cry. <laughs> no, you know what got me upset? Because it's like, remember when we were like pretend going to date and then uh, yeah. I didn't know you had a sleep number mattress? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, well, I mean, I didn't want to date him, but fuck. Right. <laughs> I did kind of miss out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could have had my own side of the bed. <laughs> I could have been like, I would have gone all the way soft, too. Mm hmm. I mean, you would probably would have too, but because uh, <laughs> I went to that store and I went, I, they were like, "Really? Still?" I'm like, "Keep going, keep going." And then They're they, like, they ma'am, you're on the floor. Let me tell you something. <laughs> they made a little comment. They were like, "Oh, all right, yeah. Oh, you still have a lot of pressure because have you gone to the store and yeah. done the trial? Yeah. And they show you how much pressure is on your joints, and then right. they keep doing it until there's no more pressure. They're like, "Oh, there's still pressure." I'm like, "Is this a weight joke? Like, are you <laughs> me? like, am I the fattest person who's ever laid on one of your fucking mattresses?" Keith, you think we should have known? We all went together to the sleep number thing, uh -huh. and, and he went with Cat. I went with Tennessee. You think like we should have known that day that we need to split up all of us? Well, at least you could adjust it. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to. <laughs> That's the greatest yeah. part about sleep number is that they should have told you that when you walked in. Well, they they could have been like, hey, you know, uh, by the way, uh, Hamza, Keith, come here. Um, you don't have to keep these. Like, you, <laughs> right. like when you guys get divorced, <laughs> you're actually that's, new partner. That's why Keith and I got a, a sleep number because we were like, this is ending, right? 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 Yeah. I can't just buy a mattress. You were like, excuse person. me, can I adjust that to a different <laughs> setting, like maybe in a year and a half? I don't <laughs> I know she just said she's so right. comfortable now, <laughs> but maybe she changes, right. I change, we change. Right. <laughs> maybe she change. I might be dating someone maybe, I don't know, 100 pounds more than this. <laughs> what do you think about that? I, I'll tell you what I do when I'm uh, depressed, and that maybe this can help you out. I've never been depressed. Okay, you're a mess. <laughs> I go online. Nobody's in the tub that much who's not depressed. <laughs> I'm I'm continue, continue. And I find a super cut. Of these bullfights where the bull <laughs> takes a horn up the matador's asshole. No. You, oh. I can't with you. No, that that actually is very triggering. I had a really bad, um, I had an anal rape nightmare uh, two nights ago. Mm -hmm. So that's triggering. A me. nightmare. Do you know that when you say that's triggering, <laughs> I had an anal rape and then you continue the <laughs> sentence dream? and say nightmare? A nightmare. <laughs> oh my mm -hmm. God. I did. I did. I had an anal <laughs> rape Tracy, nightmare. please. I had a nightmare that my mother stuck her finger right in my butt as punishment and I was screaming and I, I couldn't stop it. And I was just like, all right. Well, here we are. Honestly, did you do need to tell your therapist about that. Yeah, you yeah, think? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, here we are. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> Here's a brand new story. Matador Juan Leal mm -hmm. was uh, fighting, and I say fighting in quotes. You know they drug these bulls, by the way. I don't like this. This is they animal do? abuse. I'm not into of it. Of course it is. It's not even a fair fight. And uh, anyway, during the fight, this bull uh, stuck his horn up this uh, Matador's Good. asshole. 26-year-old uh, Right in the middle of it? Right up there. 10-inch. <gasps> Yeah, that's right. Wound in his rectum. He loved it. <laughs> so they drug him up real quick. He comes back out, kills the bull as they all do. Terrible. And, I don't like it. And then brags about what he did. Not into it. But I love th I love them getting, uh, you know, gorged. Yeah, Why they should all get gorged. Why are we still okay with this whole thing? Why are we okay? Where is this? What country is this in? This was in Madrid. Yeah, this is in Spain. Why are we okay? We're not. We shouldn't we be. As a pe like, we as Americans? I don't think. Well, we're not. We're Why not. are they okay with it? Well, are they okay with it? They're, they're I mean, animals. You can you can say <laughs> tradition, but tradition needs to Spanish end. garbage. That's what they are. I, I wow, 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 wow. Oh, wow. wow okay. Wow, sorry. Wow, I mean, wow. no, Spanish trash. Your brand is trash. You just keep on that. Yeah. I'd be. I'd be. I wonder if I'd be the only one in the crowd going, "Yes." God, I just want paella right now. 
You both are sick. Sorry. <laughs> I can't watch that. Well, why wouldn't you be happy that the bullfighter's getting hurt? Yeah, I want No, him. I'm not happy with I don't any want of anyone this. to get hurt. I don't want this to happen. What's Just happening? Home. It's Just happening. I would like everybody to be friends. But this is the world <laughs> we live in. So let this happen <laughs> and be pleased. What, at what point do they go, you know what, at the 121st person to get their ass beat? That, then we stop? You know what? Justin Bieber should uh, tweet <laughs> at the bull. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'll take you on. Do you think maybe, like, we don't know this, but the matadors are actually criminals and they chose this instead of jail? Oh, okay. Because that'd be cool. Do you know that that's a real thing? Do you know what um, rodeo clowns are? No. They're criminals. I knew a man that was a criminal. No, this is a real story. From Uh, Queens? From South Carolina. Okay. And part of his jail sentence was that he was a rodeo clown. Stop This is a real thing. Who was the judge? Judging Amy? What Uh, quirky judge? This is South Carolina. I mean, it's not really like, you know... (laughs) Sorry, guys, you have but to be a rodeo clown. He was a rodeo clown. I might even be able to get pictures. D- might you have to? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there was a photographer. <laughs> if you made all this up, you have to Photoshop. Pictures. I didn't. I want pictures. Yeah, no, no, no. I did not make this up. Uh, I, I, yeah, he told me this story. But, but seriously, like, if it, if this was like a, you know, you hurt somebody enough that like you're not a regular person who hurts like you, you don't regularly hurt people mm-hmm. but this happened or i don't know whatever it is that this sentence could go to the matador violent crime a violent yeah a violent crime where you scared the shit out of someone gaslighting your your partner yes <laughs> do you get to like would you pick jail for i'm gonna say five years or you have to fight a bull yes you get once. a 10 inch spike up your ass i mean you can also kill it keith which one would you pick what five, are the choices? five years in jail or fight a bull fight a bull I don't know. Tracy? I'm all about animal rights, so I'm probably just going to go to jail and suck it up. I think I would fight a bull because I think in jail I'm going to be fighting bulls also. Ooh. Either way, you're going to get a a rectum tear. You You know what I mean? (laughs) Wow, wow. Come on, it's Pride Month. Don't do this. (laughs) We asked. We we consensually do it. Okay. Well, speaking of which, yesterday we were talking about in London, four 15 to 18 year olds beat up a lesbian couple on a bus. And I asked uh, 15 to 18 year old men. Yes. Beat, men. Up, beat up a lesbian couple. Right. Just, I think that's even more. OK, I saw this. There was a, a picture of their bloody faces. Right. Yes. That was awful. Right. Would you most likely was also the poll mm-hmm. disown your 15 to 18 year old who mm-hmm. beat up a lesbian couple mm-hmm. or uh, as little yes oh. or no. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd give them up <laughs> or for fight a bull. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes or no. 63% say yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck them. I was surprised. But by also, that. like, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Maybe if you raise such a homophobe and you kind of have to look inward. Yeah. At 15 years old, even if they're going to the most homophobic school, yeah. You school them in that. Like, the hate inside of you is so bad. Yeah. Like, we're not going to meet these people's parents and go, like, what the fuck? Right. Happened? Like, I don't want to watch gay anal porn. But like, I also love gay people. You know what that I mean? Was such a stretch. Like, I but don't that's even what, know. Yeah, but but I'm saying like, you could not agree with something. You could not like it. You could not want to see something. Oh, the level. And then like to the point where you're like, we must destroy them. Right. It's like okay, well, that's a little bit. Much. Yeah, because it's more. It's it's not just your homophobia. It's you, it's the hate. The homophobia. The amount of hate. The amount that you don't mind jumping right. women. Like you're literally risking your freedom. To try to hurt someone very badly. What? Like, yeah, there's a lot you can't control with your kids, but yeah, it is tough to know at uh, 15 years old that. Would your w- kids do that? Keith? You, have a, you have they, a bunch of keep, kids. They there. didn't get. No, they won. They that mm. they they have all this hate, or they didn't learn anything growing up with you at 15. They beat up a lesbian couple. Whether it's my fault or not, as the dad, it, it's the end. It's you're well, you're, you're out of my now, life. So. You're, well, I'm, I, t- I told them that the other day. Yeah. I said, you beat up lesbian couples, you're, you're out, out of my life. Well, I, be- I believe you, Keith. And I think a lot of people would just say that, but then would be like, well, at the moment, this is my kid and blah, blah, blah. Because I don't know. To me, as soon as you say disowning, I'm like, oh, you don't want responsibility for this kid anymore. That's You're too bad. You yeah, know I would I mean? do that like no, even if my kid didn't touch any kind of uh, <laughs> lesbian right. couple. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't care about how you, you're judging me. Did you think it was my fault? I'm the dad. Did are you like, oh, you're giving up on your kid? I, I none of that would bother me. This is a this is a psychopath I have in my life, and he's now out of my life. But and aren't you responsible is old for your psychopath? Yeah, I messed up. Bye. <laughs> I would accuse See my newborn jail. baby of 
fighting a lesbian. I'd be like, did you? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. I heard a rumor about you the other day that you yeah. punched a lesbian couple. Yeah. Cra- crawled the fuck out You're of the out house. Of here. You're out of here. <laughs> that's that's the new way that you can get an <laughs> right? abortion. You have to make up that your unborn child is a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. And then he's the con- actually really racist. Could you right. take him off my hand? But you have to come up with something that the conservatives would be upset with. Like he was gonna come out of here and just give people money for doing nothing. <laughs> we gotta get rid of this kid. <laughs> Uh, my love is conditional, okay? Everyone's love is conditional. Oh, be. I don't know if I believe that. Everyone's love is conditional. You can break someone any. Who Who's unconditional loving? I think that um, there's... Love can be unconditional. Relationships are conditional. Okay. I see what you're saying. Like, interactions are. So you could still love your kid, sure. but no longer From talk afar. to them. Yep. Okay. Okay, I'll love them. Sure, whatever that word means. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Okay, that's great. Like in theory. You yeah. Know, conditional love I have for my partner, my family, the X Men, everything. It's all conditional. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Loopy. I loose. think more more people need to know that that like everyone's love is unconditional in terms of relationships. Like, because my um, it's conditional. It's conditional. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, Hennessy would be like, but we love each other so much. I'm like, I don't know what you're standing. <laughs> <on right now." laughs> but I don't told you that yeah, shit. I don't. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, Loopy Lou says, I would do, let's see, I would keep them, well, I would have the baby in my house or the kid in my house. If they lived under my roof, I could re-educate him. Okay. But we're saying it's your own kid. So you already educated him. Now he's ready for the advanced classes? Yeah. I would make them, if there were two of my kids that beat up a lesbian couple, I'd make them fight to the death. <laughs> and whoever was stronger... Dies also. <laughs> <laughs> and then I trip. would just say, and then I would just shoot them both. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's i mean that's so simplifying things violent. loopy Lou, like that's like oh i didn't know i was supposed to now the discipline yeah. starts like oh i didn't know they needed that much discipline most likely you could see that your kid wants to beat someone up if that's where they went well right? the people that say they'll go back in time and educate hitler i'm like it's really worth it you're uh, so <laughs> smart it's worth it <laughs> just drown them drown that little fucking baby i'm i was reading a story <laughs> what do you think about this idea i have it's a story of a 88 year neighbor, 88 year old neighbor. Uh, a man was accused of raping her. Oh dear! And he says, "No, I didn't rape her." A 24 year old man. He says, "I didn't rape her. I just tied her up and took oh. her shirt off." Oh my God! Now let's say you're, you're listening to this and you think at first, okay, you raped an 88 year old. You should be given the death penalty. Let's let's say that's the way you're thinking. Okay. Bullhorn up the asshole. And then you learn that. Oh, he just, she was just tied up and her shirt was taken off. If you don't think that she should, the person should still die, the guy. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Do you get killed? Wait, what? <laughs> I need, this is like Regent's math. I'm going to need some yeah, time to is, study. You heard wait, the so story. Wait, so how many oranges did I buy? Okay, so you heard the story. <laughs> Train A told you the story at 530. Who did? Okay. Train A? So... <laughs> You heard that somebody was raped, and you go, "Well, that person, sh- the person right. that did it, should get and the death like, penalty." Oh wait, no, it was just no. The shirt we thing. just tied it up, took and off I'm the like, shirt. All right, well, maybe they shouldn't die. Punched her titties, and a then bit. I get killed. Yes, because wh- why do you think that's not as uh, egregious? I think everyone should get killed all the time. Apparently, okay. There's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of mm-hmm. uh, beating up. This is a violent episode. I don't make the news. I, I hope you don't air this. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not putting my name on this. <laughs> Uh, I do when I heard the tying up and taking off the shirt. It's the same thing. You're terrifying. Someone. I mean, there's something fucking wrong with you. You yeah. need to not be in the world. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's the end of it. You How are unsafe to yeah. be in the world. Yeah. Well, here's a fun little news story. All right. Sophie Turner. She was in Game of Thrones. Okay. Okay. And people are shitting on Game of Thrones, so the finale. So she's, she says, these people need to get a life. We did our best. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And now she's uh, she's in Dark Phoenix. She's the main character, and that's getting. Gonna, oh, sorry. I thought that was a place. <laughs> they're, that's funny. They're gonna make those. You know the contracts that they say you like. We own everything uh, throughout the universe. Blah blah blah. Like the mm-hmm. actors have to mm-hmm. sign sign away their thing. They need to also start telling them not to react to anything either. Yeah, like yeah. Be- please don't feed the trolls. You didn't write it. No. You acted in it. It's over, and it actually doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Uh, she is also in Dark Phoenix, and that's getting terrible reviews. The mm. new X Men because they're mad at her, uh, maybe. And so, like, I, I picture her just having a time, and I kind of, kind of like it. <laughs> 
You're such a wacko. But I, I know, get it. Because it's so weird. Why are you writing out a petition that you hate Game of Thrones? Just who cares? Who gives a shit? It's going down in history as the greatest. Who cares? Well, anyway, she was on Conan, and she was talking about that coffee cup, if you remember, that was left in a scene of Game of Thrones. The Starbucks cup. A Starbucks-looking okay. uh, cup was left, uh, and, uh, you know, they could have dragons, but they wouldn't have to go coffee. And she said, and it was in front of the Queen of the Dragons. Mm. So you assume that she's the one who had the coffee. And Sophie Turner said, no, it was Kit Harrington, Jon Snow. He's lazy, and I think he would have done that. It was Kit. It was 100% Kit. Well, at least she's loyal. Kid <laughs> is in rehab right now. Because, Perfect. Because he's sad. Because he's sad about the ending. He was this <laughs> is not real. Who are these fucking people? Actors are insane. Mm-hmm. They all need a bull thing up their assholes. I can't take this anymore. Yeah, I can't believe like you, you get an acting job and you forget that you used to be my waiter. Calm down. Seriously. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with like either of it, but we're all pieces of shit yeah. and you, you're entertaining me. But picture Kit Harrington. He's like, all right, I got my stuff together with the, uh, with the ice demons and the <laughs> dragons. Uh, this I think is not real. He opens the door to leave rehab. Picks up a newspaper. They're saying I left the coffee cup. Uh, <laughs> now I have to go back to the one hundred and twenty thousand dollar a month rehab. <laughs> Jesus, I can't wait to go to rehab. Right. I, I can't wait until people criticize this show so much that I can afford to. That you're like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Someone said that they make us record all night long. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to. I swear, it's my alcohol. <laughs> uh, wow. I I said something that was very controversial, and people are responding. Yeah. Let's go to rehab. And that's the thing. They're not. It's not even like a response to like you. You got on a platform and you said something. Now people are responding, so you're getting butt hurt because you had like emotional ties to it. You read words. They're not mentally stable. They are so not even close to mentally stable. I think their brains are, are just not working. I think out. you're right, and I think what we need to do now is after an actor is done with their with their mm-hmm. whole play, put them in a thing, cave. No, give them a fake script. So they could know who to be next. Right. Like, here, you're a real person. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to wash your asshole every day. Right. Give them a script of life. Like, yeah. Keith Malley, you just played, like, you know, Harevo the Great or whatever. The, the Vero the Great. Vero, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so now you're going to play a character named Kevin Moley. Okay. But that person's going to brush their teeth every morning. Uh-huh. That's the new That's the new play. Yeah. And then they're going to like play music that makes them happy. Mm-hmm. It happens. You mow the lawn. You're nice yeah. to your neighbors. Right. Yeah. And these guys would be so You don't go to it. rehab. <laughs> yeah. I, I decided that Kevin had sensitive gums. <laughs> so he found the right toothpaste for right. him. And then, and then their stupid character gets developed. And then they ask you stupid questions like, you know, what's my motivation for going on this date? And it's like, oh, you want to get laid. Because when you were 18, you promised yourself that you would when you could. <laughs> and that's it. And that's, you know, they don't know that that's their therapist. Yeah. They think that it's the director. These, these actors, I'm not saying every actor, maybe I am, uh, but these actors are very simple people. Yeah, they, yeah. they need another person to yeah. be. I don't know who I They're am. They're cult members, not cult leaders. Yes. That's true. Yeah. By the way, we learned a lot today. I learned that Judge Tracy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. would sentence everybody to bullhorns up their ass. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's the new that's the new punishment. Uh, Tracy's Twitter is Trixie Tuzini. Tracy's Instagram is Trixie Tuzini. <laughs> Look at that. Her phone number, 917-284. That's not even real. The website is TracyCarnazzo.com. The podcast, of course, that she hosts and doesn't need any help is Teen Mom Trash Talk. And 90 Day Fiance Trash Talk. You, of course, uh, can you know follow her website, see where she's at. She'll be at Yonkers Comedy Club yeah, on I the will. 14th and 15th of this month. Yes, I will. That's the, this weekend, Great. Friday and Saturday. Yonkers. Wait. Yeah, Yonkers Comedy Club. I'm with Mike Fenoya, another Italian. I love from him. The Practical Jokers. And I'm with Paul Verzi. Nice. Yeah. Um, what's Yonkers like? Because I know what it's like. What is it like I don't know what the outside comedy. of Yonkers is like, but the Comedy Club yeah. is in the Ridge Hill Mall, which is an outdoor mall that's beautiful. It's in a mall. It's in an outdoor mall. Okay. And it is, uh, malls are my favorite because I'm from Queens. (laughs) So I get really excited because um, I get there a little early and you can go to Williams-Sonoma, you can go to Whole Foods. Like it's, it's an experience. All right, you guys, Queens is very exciting. And obviously we know that from Tracy. Tracy, I want you to say something in a very heavy Queens accent. Okay, what do you want me to say? I went to high school with him. He's a murderer now. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay, funny story. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I went to high school with him. He's a murderer now. Was that good? It's so good. And I he's not it. a murderer. He, it was He's an attempted murderer. And if you want to write him a letter, his name is Josh Evans. And he's gonna. he has five more years, ladies. He's in the best shape of his life. <laughs> he's in North Carolina. He is, he's in a very low security jail right now. Uh, great guy. He's earning his degree right there in jail. What's the degree? Uh, he, he's taken all different classes. He's oh, yeah, actually, there's time. Yeah. He's, Seven masters. Yeah, he's like, do you know that I have to do all my papers without the computer? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, that sounds awful. And I told my mom that. And she's like, yeah, that's what I did in college. How, where'd you meet him? <laughs> uh, I went to school with him my whole life. In North Carolina? No, no, no. He, um, what happened was in Queens. after he became addicted to drugs, he, he, he went to uh, college in Alabama. And after he became addicted to drugs, he was homeless in North Carolina, mm. and he stabbed someone in a drug deal gone wrong 17 or 18 times. <laughs> uh, but now he's sober. He's leading his— Do you get, do you get one attempted murder charge or 17, 18 <laughs> attempted murder You know, charges? I don't know. That's a good I don't question. know. But he's getting out soon. He's, he's in a really great headspace. He's good. really cute. I have pictures of him if you want to write to him, if you want to see him. What a great guy. Okay. This is uh, I got <laughs> I got news uh, this week or last week. Uh, Xerxes went to school also in Queens, as did I. Yeah. He's so shout out to aviation. I know some. Oh, aviation! Yeah. I used to um, maybe sleep with someone or two or five from there. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 Anything for that first class? Yeah, I right? passed it the other night when I was coming home from the city, and I was like, oh, wait, they're pretty fucking hot. My uh, my heart fluttered when they <laughs> don't like you know saw their fingers off yeah well they're flying what are, planes. We, ta what are we talking about aviation, aviation. High school it's a uh, and you saw your fingers off all right got it aviation they learn how to um fix planes and yeah so it's, plane, it's a trade high school that's like the thing can i just say one other thing but mm. they do they honestly lose their fingers because you're talking about kids who are working you know with they're usually like really bad kids too that have to go to these high schools. They're, they're awesome uh <laughs> they're pretty bad Hemda <laughs> uh, used to like actors too so yeah. give it time <laughs> this is okay. true. not all actors keith i'm like okay can now it's say, all actors if you guys are listening to this show there's like four or five people like how many people listen like four five yeah. six people <laughs> Make sure you're following Keith and the Girl on Instagram at Keith and the Girl. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, so my point is somebody <laughs> from aviation killed someone. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Killed his landlord. And it was like an accidental death. They were trying to... Ugh, a is, renter? This is so... Oh, my God, Tracy. <laughs> what a loser. What a dumb story. They kidnapped the landlord. First of all, now it's they. I'm like, oh, you included other people. Very smart. They kidnapped him, accidentally killed him. They just wanted to get ransom. And I'm like, who are you uh. calling for ransom? Who? They should have poked holes in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it weird? So this guy that yeah. you knew, yeah, Josh. he was homeless. He was in Alabama. He was, I mean, I don't know if he was homeless. The article says he was homeless, but I think he was just living out of a motel. Okay. But why do these people move all the time? What's They're, he doing in North Carolina? Uh, meth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> to be honest with you, Everybody meth. likes a change of scenery, yeah. I suppose. All right. <laughs> Tracy, thank you. Thank you. I'll call you tonight. Okay, bye.